Today we're going to solve radical equations. So. In solving radical equations, we first must understand the steps to solving these radical equations. Step one is to isolate the radical. We would like to isolate that radical term on one side of the equal sign. So that means we want to get rid of everything else, whether it's a variable term or a constant. We want to isolate that radical. If there's a co coefficient in front of the radical, we divide everything by that coefficient. So that will be isolating the radical. Step two is, once you've isolated the radical, you can multiply, well actually you can raise each side to the power of the index of that radical. Raise each side to the power of the index of the radical. So you'll see what I mean shortly. You look at the radical and you look at the index. The index tells you what to raise each side to. Next step is to solve the resulting equations. Solve the resulting equations. However, if you see that you still have a radical, repeat step one and two. Repeat steps one and two if you still have radicals. Step four is to check. Let's try an example. We have the radical equation square root of p plus five equals nine. Square root of p plus five equals nine. So if we go back and look at our notes, we'll find the steps to solving radical equations. The first step says to isolate the radical term. This is the radical term. It's the term with the radical. So we want to isolate it. To isolate it, we have to get rid of the positive 5. To get rid of the positive 5, we do its opposite. Subtract 5. What we do to one side, we do to the other. And we get square root of p equals 4. Step two says that once we've isolated the radical, we can raise each of these to a power. But what power? That's the question. Well, all we need to do is look into the index of the radical. Whatever this index is, is what we raise both sides to. In our case here, the index is implied to be a two because it's a square root. With square roots, we don't have to write a two there. Sometimes we will see a two there. So we'll raise both sides to the second power. If it was a cube root, we'd cube both sides. If it was a fourth root, we'd raise both sides to the fourth power. But in our problem, it's a square root. So we square both sides. When we square a square root, we're left with the radicand, which is the p. Four to the second power is 16. So p is equal to 16. However, with radical equations, you must go through a check. So although I boxed it in, and I'm assuming that's the correct answer, it just may not be. So let me go through with the check. So I check it by inputting 16 back into the original. So I say the square root of 16 plus 5 equals 9. The square root of 16 is 4 plus 5 equals 9. 4 and 5 is 9, and that equals 9, so it checks out. So our answer is in fact correct, p equals 16. This is a must every time we're dealing with radical equations. A check is a must. All right, let's try another example. This example of a radical equation says the cube root of w minus 1 minus 2 equals 2. So let's go with our steps. The first step says to isolate the radical term. 
here the radical term is the cube root of w minus 1. So we have to get rid of the negative 2. So we'll add 2 to both sides. And we'll get the cube root of w minus 1 equals 4. The cube root of w minus 1 equals 4. The second step says we can raise both sides to a power. That power is dependent upon the index. Here, our index is a 3. So we cube both sides. So we have the cube root of w minus 1 raised to the third power. And it's equal to 4 raised to the third power. So when we cube a cube root, we get w minus 1, 4 to the third power. 4 times 4 is 16. 16 times another 4 is 64. So now, step 3 tells us to solve the resulting equation. If we still had a radical, we would repeat steps 1 and 2 by isolating the radical and then raising, two, raising both sides to a power. But we don't have any more radicals, so step 3 says solve the resulting equation. So here, w equals 65. The next step says that we must check all radical equations. There could be an extraneous solution, so let's check it. So we have the cube root of 65 minus 1 minus 2 equals 2. The cube root of 64 minus 2 equals 2. The cube root of 64 is 4 minus 2 equals 2. 4 minus 2 is 2, and that does equal 2. So we can say that 65 is our solution for W. Our next example is a radical equation that says 7 is equal to x plus 3 raised to the 1 4th power plus 9. So in this example, we have a quantity raised to the 1 4th power. But from our past experiences with the rational exponents, we know that we can rewrite this quantity. It's rewritten as 7 is equal to x plus 3. And we take the fourth root. With rational exponents, we know that the denominator is the index. And if there's a 1 in the numerator, that's what we're raising everything to, to the first power. But there's no need to write raising it to the first power. And then we say plus 9. So now we look at it and say, that looks more like a radical equation that we've been used to. So now we start with the first step. The first step says to isolate the radical term. So to isolate the radical term, we must first get rid of the positive 9. So we do this opposite, subtract 9. Positive 7 and negative 9 make negative 2 equals fourth root of x plus 3. Next, step two says raise both sides to a power. That power is dependent upon the index of the radical term. The index is a four, so we'll raise both sides to the fourth power. So negative two to the fourth, and the fourth root of x plus three to the fourth. Well, we know when we raise a fourth root to the fourth power, we're left with what's underneath the radical symbol, x plus three, Negative 2 to the 4th, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 2 is 16. And then the exponent is even, so we'll have a positive sign. Next we'll say 16 is equal to x plus 3. The next step tells us to solve the resulting equation. If we still had a radical, we'd repeat steps 1 and 2. So in solving this, we'll say x is equal to 13. So in checking our solution, x equals 13, we'll replace it back into the original. But it may be easier if we make this quantity raised to the 1 4th power a radical once more. So we'll rewrite it as 7 equals x plus 3, the fourth root of it, plus 9. And then everywhere we see an x, we'll insert 13. 
7 equals the fourth root of 13 plus 3 plus 9. 7 equals the fourth root of 16 plus 9. 7 equals the fourth root of 16 is 2. 2 times itself 4 times is 16 plus 9. And here we get 7 equals 11. That's not a true statement. So therefore, our solution here of x equals 13 that we got is called an extraneous solution. That is incorrect because when we checked it out, it did not work out. It's an extraneous solution, so we say it's the empty set.